well, so I thought of an episode 5, season 1 of Only Murders in the Building. <gasps> what a fun episode. <laughs> Mainly because a lot of the um, camp comedy that Oliver um, brought to the, the episode, kind of thinking he's now become my new favourite of the trio. <laughs> Oh, wow. Um, yeah, a lot of the Bermans in this, um, in this, in this case now. And it's almost like everybody seems to know that, know Tim Kono. It was brilliant how, the odd boy Charles said, was everybody know Tim Kono? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so let's get straight to it. So obviously this episode had to pick up on the course of bit, that big cliffhanger that Oliver's son delivered to him at the end of the last episode where he's like Dad you didn't tell me you were doing a podcast with Mabel I know her it's like Ooh. and I just love how we spend the entire episode with we know that, o that Oliver and Charles know about, about Mabel but Mabel doesn't know that Charles and Oliver know about Mabel, it was just so hilarious. The way they were literally following her in the, in the what felt what was what felt like a yellow Mustang. <laughs> oh, it was just, it was just a bit comedy caper, didn't it? A bit Kill Bill. Um, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, because obviously Arba's got this car, um, and Charles was like, "You pay for parking." And I was like, well, no wonder Hopper's got problems with his bills because he's paying for parking. And oh, there was a brilliant how Hopper's like, when Hopper finally called my child, he's like, no, 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 you drive. I haven't had a, I haven't a driving license for 25 years. And I was like, well, how have you still got a car? It's just. <laughs> it was priceless. It was just really. Replies says, yeah, a lot of Oliver provide a lot of comedy capers in episodes, so he's now slowly at this halfway point, because I'm halfway through now, but halfway through the first season. He's slowly becoming my new favourite. Um Yeah. But big revelation, big revelation, we now know who Tie Dye Guy is. Now, I had mentioned in a previous uh, episode that I had forgotten all about Tie Dye Guy. Um so when Charles brought him up, in the first time I was like, who? Because I just literally forgot about it straight away. So we now know that Tie Dye Guy is the one and only Oscar. Mabel's old friend who got sent down for um, Zoe's murder, but of course didn't do it. Well, Oscar's now out of prison. And I was, no, I was really looking forward to seeing Oscar come out, Oscar. Because I was wondering what kind of. Because I did wonder in episode two, could maybe what happened, um, what happened to Tim in the past, in their past, could be connected to Tim Kerr's murder. Maybe Oscar could maybe be the one that does did it, you know, as kind of revenge for the fact that Tim Connor knew did it but didn't say did it, and of course Oscar then got sent down, got ten years. Um, and that still could be the case. I mean, Oscar did sort of, you know claim innocency but I'm just really 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 not that convinced I'm really not um and he kind of looked like a bit of a reformed person you know he, he didn't look like, like the sort of person who would be um cold hearted a murderer or had an evil vendetta and or hold the grudge but being sent down for crime and commit you know for 10 years he had to be quite a gentle, lovable soul who just really did really always wonder about the whole episode. Are those two maybe gonna get it get it on in the back of the the kabuski? I, I just can't tell. I mean, is there this love, lovey, lovey, love for sure? Because remember one point when Charles picks up the phone to Mabel and I was like, "Oh, is he a lying to your boyfriend?" And Mabel's like, "I don't have a boyfriend." And then oh, weird funny little stuff he did in the um, gap service date. She was like. You two friends or any more than friends? I so I don't know. Should we still out on that? That's not the burning question, by the way. That's not. That's not. That's not the burning question because I think that might get dressed a little bit later on. We enter the second half of the season. But anyway, I did wonder: Are these two friends? Are they more than friends? Would they like something more to happen? Um. 
But yeah, but I clearly just had his head down as people thought, and he wants to open a yoga studio. Wow, you know, I was even, I, even Mabel was shocked by that. I was like, really? Does it look? Does it look? Does it look? Does it look like a guy who does yoga? He doesn't look bendy as fuck. <laughs> Oh, it was really fun. It was really funny when he said, "I'm." When he said he's positive calm, and I'm like, "Oh, don't, don't, don't go there." We're gonna try and keep this classy. We're gonna try and keep this classy, okay? So just don't. There's a lot. There was a lot of real funny comedy camp humor in this, but just like, oh god. And then it got towards the end, it got a little bit filthy. Um. Yeah. But Oscar seems to, seems to be quite smart because he was able to help piece of the puzzles that Mabel was trying to uh, figure out, like how they were supposed to go to Bayport, not Jersey. So that was quite um, brilliant. Um, but yeah, so I loved how throughout the whole episode, before they obviously, because we don't, the three, the trio don't meet up again until the very, very, very end before we go to Cliffhanger. So the whole episode, you've got Charles and Oliver. Still trying to process this information, you know, because Oliver's never trusted Mabel from the get go, never has, um, and it hasn't come up again until now. Whereas Charles has been like, No, Mabel's a sweet girl, she would have had a fly. And I think that's because obviously Charles is kind of the first person, per, uh, uh, not Charles, Mabel, sorry, that's because uh, when it comes to Charles, Mabel's kind of the first per person he opened up to. So he kind of doesn't want to believe that she could be capable of this. Um, but yeah. Um, but even then we have a little flashback where he did bring up tie-dye guy. And it was like, no, why waste my time with, time with him? No, he's not done it. No. But has he not done it? The jury's still out. The jury is still out on uh, that front. Yeah, so I kind of loved how they were these, yeah, most of the episodes had to spend Charles Oliver literally trying to try not only process what they got, the bombshell they got at the end of the, la end of the last episode, but also trying to work out do we now trust her? Do we not trust her? Yeah, Oliver's just like, he's, because Oliver thinks he's now got a scoop, you know? Because he's thinking, oh, this is finally something juicy for the podcast, you know? Because they didn't get that many listeners so far, have they? No, not got that many listeners. So Oliver's thinking, oh, a big juicy twist! Our co-host has gone rogue. Yeah, that prob yeah that probably would yeah you know, get get more listeners. Wouldn't help Mabel's reputation, but yeah, that'd be the kind of thing you would need. That the angle you need to maybe try and boost the ratings. You know, get the you know get the subscribers up. You know, um. Yeah, because apparently everybody loves a good, sc a good scandal, even if it's one your own. But anyway, um, yeah, so I thought it was pretty how Arbor did just now get into voice and bend all his suspicions, all his frustrations, and Charles is just literally just trying to have another bit because he just does not want to believe that they are going to be able to believe it. Um, oh, even when he's talking to. Even, even when I was talking about it to the, to, to the two people who uh, um, give them a lift. Because poor Aphrodite, she broke down in the gas station. And I thought, oh, the girl, the girl loser, the girl loser. I spent the whole last evening, the girl loser. Because clearly their car's literally jacked, not going to move. And I thought, okay, it's the girl loser, the girl loser. And then the, um, the guy who... Um, got phone number to tow the, tow the truck they're like can we give it for you it's like yeah they was like oh <laughs> oh that was brilliant okay so then we get so yeah so far so we spend the whole episode building up building up building up building up to put this big confrontation that I was hoping was gonna go down between the trio and it didn't really build uh, build on that much did it Maybe because Oscar then came back. Because before we got to that, Oscar was kind of like, you know, I can't, I, right? No, can we not let it go? Maybe they, they was like, no, we're not letting this go. And so they go out of ways. And then he then basically comes back during the barmy, and then gets and then gets involved in it. So I think Oscar now might be might, might be involved whether he likes or not. 
Uh, but it was brilliant how, you know, Charles taking the lead. Now, I was not expecting this. I was probably expecting Oliver to be the one who takes the lead. But he was brilliant. The back was like, he's very wounded, Mabel. Whereas I may have stirred us up. I was like, oh. <laughs> This is classic Oliver, isn't it? Like, literally, I was going to stir the pot. But then I'm going to just sit back and just let it watch all unfold. And then I'll podcast about it afterwards. You know, that kind of, like, oh my God. Wow. Okay. Um, not see this coming. But anyway, because um, I was really expecting Oliver to be one that would take the lead. And Charles would just literally just make some angry rants from the, um, here and there from time to time. Was not expecting Charles one that took the lead. And you can see he was gay raving. <gasps> On the oh my god, it looks like he's about to blow a gasket. Um, yeah, and I was like, no, I was good. Look, I'll t I will explain the classic. Girl, I can explain, yeah. And it, she's like, no, I didn't come to do it, and no, Oscar didn't come to do it either. Um, because I love how Charles. Straight away, as soon as Oscar comes back, Charles is like, tie die. Oh god. Um and it basically then turns into a bit of a bad cop situation. Um although I would not have pictured all of being the good cop. Oh popsicles <laughs> So then Charles says a bad cop's like, right, you were gonna go up to Tim's apartment, weren't you? And I was like, No he wasn't And then Oscar's like, uh actually I was like Ooh. So we did do it. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> because, um, as Oscar puts it, he was going to go up to his apartment. Didn't know what he was going to do. Maybe, in his words, fuck him up a bit. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> because there's two versions, right? This is going to go mucky now. There are two versions of the phrase, fuck him up a bit. It's either kill him or actually hanky panky nucky bonking quick scene to whatever you want to call the word x whatever you want to call that okay that's it so which one was it oscar he didn't get elaborate did he no but it was like oh. again it was like don't oscar that's two times now you but you've been filthy in this episode there again, he's only, he has only just come out of prison, okay, with no contact of, of, of other people who he would like to be with. Okay, um, so I won't blame him for being a bit horny, but if you get use those phrases, can you elaborate? Because there are actually two meanings to the phrase "fuck him up a bit." All right, it's either dead or it's <laughs> bonking so if you're going to use that phrase you need to clarify which what you meant by it all right you're gonna okay so then it's like oh yeah and then before we could get to the to tim he heard the gunshots so right we've now got a new we've got a new piece to the puzzle we know a gun was involved. Because up until this point, I don't think we were, ever knew how Tim actually died. Everybody, everybody's everybody been saying, suicide, suicide, he killed himself. And the trio knew it was not suicide because they found the engagement ring in episode one. And I've also been saying it, it can't be suicide either. So there you go. So it's not suicide. So we now know it was definitely not, not suicide. It was definitely a murder. Because we now know a gun was involved. All right. Okay. And then, lo and behold. <laughs> so they're just, so yeah. So you got Oscar basically trying to explain his side of the story that night. And then, oh, lo and behold. Um, what's his name? Did, did we get a name? Was 
was it Mabel's cousin that then walked in and was like so Tim knew so Tim was who then said Tim was murdered I was like oh there's, another, there's everyone now oh great does everyone and then Charles I think it was he was Charles Lobb went did, it, did everyone know Tim Kono <laughs> Uh, okay. Mabel's cousin. Was it Mabel's cousin? Oh my god. I forgot it. Yeah, I think it was Mabel's cousin. Yeah. So Mabel's cousin then walks in. It's like, oh, so Tim did get murdered. And, 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 so yeah. and so then we get a little bit more backstory. So more pieces of the puzzle. Um, get filled in because obviously we know Mabel had been doing her in, in, in investigation now shares what she found so far and that is okay this is where it gets really juicy now so Oliver here's your angle here's the angle to get the subscribers up here comes the angle Oliver okay so here we go Tim was involved with trying to take down Black mar a black market jewellery dealer known as Angel. Alright. And they learned that tells us that that's what Tim was trying to do, try to take Angel down. As been doing trying to do it for years. Which is why he collected the jewellery in his apartment. So Oh my god. So right, so now I'm thinking, was there ever a fiance? Because obviously, yeah, because obviously, in episode one, we found that again from Ring, and that was the piece that said that got the truth to got to do rule out suicide. Because we all thought, right, who's gonna get? Who was supposed to be the lucky guy or girl? Because we don't want Tim to have sex parties, because he. But, but maybe, maybe there was no fiance. It was just another one of the many pieces of jewelry that Tim had collected you know as a way to try and you know get take angel down um yeah on oh, the end the episode with a brilliant cliffhanger where mabel just put, here's all my evidence and just lays it out of the table and that is a lot of jewelry that is a lot of jewelry so i'm, I'm now thinking how the hell did tim afford all that because that was a lot of jewelry a lot okay and we still don't really know that much about him, Conan. He's still a very mysterious figure. So, I mean, that just, I mean, it must have cost a lot. I mean, but yeah. So, yeah. So, two big pieces of the puzzle here. We knew that Tim Conan was trying to take down this black market dealer. And we now know that Oscar was actually in the building for definite on the night of the murder. Now, he claims, right, Oscar claims it wasn't him because he heard outside of Tim's door, he heard the gunshot. And you know what? For now, I'm willing to believe him. Until we get further evidence and further proof, I'm willing to believe Oscar's other story for now. Okay. I'll be, I'm with Mate. I will side with Mabel. Yeah, he didn't do it. But we will see. We will see how that uh, plays out. Um, yeah, two big pieces of detail there. And, oh, it, again, like last week, it, it ends. Yes, it ends. Where it's like, oh, we're just getting into it. Tell us more. Tell us more. We're just so hooked. Just like leave us one more. It's like, oh. You know, this is two episodes around that we've had a good cliffhanger ending. Makes you want to binge it, doesn't it? Anyway, um, not that, not that I am gonna, no, no, no. Um, yeah. So I'm left wondering. Like I said, oh, well, has has this, you know, balmy between our trio been sorted? Because trust has now been broken. The fact that maybe, and I kind of fear this was gonna happen. I kind of fear it's gonna happen. Because obviously Mabel has been very closely guarded, okay, and now she's going to have to not be guarded because she's going to have to basically tell Charles all about everything, whether she wants to or not. Trust has now been broken between the trio. 
Charles and Robert are going to basically take, going to find it very, very, very hard to keep trusting Mabel or to even get back to where they were before the end of episode four. And I kind of felt not enough time because this was a very short episode. This is this is the shortest of the episodes so far. I don't think enough time was focused on that rift that's down in the bed. And I said this last week, I don't want to drag it out. I don't want to drag this out. Let's just get straight to it. Because this could be juicy. This could be really dramatic. We didn't get much of it. Because clearly they're going to want to have it linger across the next couple of, couple of episodes. Um, yeah. Because oh, I can imagine, I could, see, I, could, I could picture these three butting heads. For a good couple of episodes and, then, and it, it just throws the investigation complete off course um yeah but so this is going to yeah so it's interesting because there's now a great big rift between our trio and it doesn't look like it's got repaired by any in the, in the episode did it well they were kind of straight back on the case it was like quit bar mate right let's get back to it so what sort of you learned mabel yeah so, yeah, so it's like, oh, no, I don't think that means that they, they, they've fixed their issues. I think what it means is they just put them aside um, for the time being. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes on. Right, so this episode was kind of hard to find a burning question because we're halfway through the first season now. What I've been trying to do in each episode is trying to come up with a burning question to fit to ponder on at the end of each episode. Try and think of something in the episode that made me ponder. Um, some of them will get answered, like we had last week, and some of them probably won't get answered. Um, yeah, so it was kind of hard because I'm watching the episode and I'm trying to think there's nothing really that's making me sort of question or wonder or maybe think until we got to the very, very end. And that is who is Angel? I mean, the real. I mean, the real. I mean, I kind of had two, two that I could have gone with. I could have either gone with who shot Tim Kono. Therefore, it's most likely going to be this Angel person. So I think for me, that's got to be the burning question: Who the hell is Angel? You know. So, I mean, we're learning a lot now. Um. We're starting to get you know, new information put together. And maybe it didn't have anything to do with what happened all those years ago to Zoe. But it could be. Who knows? I'm still not ruling that out. Um, even though Oscar wants to move on from it. We're not going to move on from it. <laughs> we still haven't got all the details about that, have we? Yeah, so that's going to be my burning question for this episode is who is Angel? Angel. <laughs>